praise the Lord God's people. We want to uh, thank God for making us partakers of today and um, having uh, the opportunity of knowing the Lord more because that's really one, one of the reasons, the major part of the reason, well, the only reason why we are here, to know the Lord and to do His will. Um, we are here once more to have um, um, the 13th episode of the series um, the new heavens and the new earth now it's the new heavens and the new earth in that order because the heavens uh, they are in plural and they show that the, the interjections the interferences and um, of the Lord is going to be on the heavens plural uh, and then eventually on the earth singular now because this is because there are different heavens we have talked about it the other time there's a heaven of god which is referred to as the third heaven the place of the fullness of divine authority in the universe uh and then that place is not a stable place it's not a stable arrangement what did i what do i mean you know uh, it means that that heaven can shift base at any time it can be elongated it can be it can be at um uh, in human experience, it can be sh shrunk. What do I mean? Anywhere you have the Lord sitting um, enthroned in authority over the affairs of mankind is heaven. That is heaven. Uh, but there is a heaven, uh, a spiritual um, uh, place where God is and where God is seated in that place. What makes that place unique is because God's will is done there, is desired his desires are fulfilled there. That's what makes that heaven, heaven. Uh, heaven is thy throne, O God. And then I said that we have the spiritual heaven. The spiritual heaven is a heaven that sits enthroned over uh, mankind. Um, that um, since the fall of man, um, the, 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 the powers of our heavens have been negative, have been um, without... Um, uh, I've been void of the divine influence. Now, what the, and that heaven is very, very important. Now, that heaven is, is important because no matter what God has ordained and decreed in His uh, third heavens, if the heavens that are over man would not be um, um, accepting of the divine will and 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 uh, decree, then the divine will and the divine decree, which is coming from the third heaven, would not be able to find. Um, a, a right of a, a right of way to come in on the earth and to be fulfilled and to be manifest in the earth. Praise God. Now, so uh, now, so you can since the fall of man, that they have been, uh, had been populated and be uh, the, the seat of enthronement in that heaven had been taken over by um, satanic um, forces, you know, fist satanic princes. Now you see that in Daniel. Now it can also be taken over by the princes of God, depending on what the hearts of the people, when they cry unto God and God take, uh, takes them over and all of that, then the principality of God will be the one enthroned upon that heaven. Now you see uh, that the, prince, the, the word principality comes from the word prince. Praise God. Now uh, the prince is, a, is an influencer. He's... Um, he puts, he's an influencer. He's the one that makes decrees. So that's why. So, and, and you know, Daniel, in sort of that, when, when, when Gabriel was talking to Daniel, he said, but Michael, your prince, came to help me. Michael, your prince. That was a prince over the land of Israel. Now, even though Israel was in captivity at that time, captivity at that time, that prince was still working. That prince was still there. That prince was still powerfully present fighting for God's will and purposes to be done in their lives. Hallelujah. Now, so you have, um, now you have the, um, what I call the cosmic heavens. The word cosmic is universe. That is the cosmic heavens where you have the stars. Now we said the stars are arranged in 12 bouquets, which are called constellations, which the scriptures in the book of Job 38 called the Mazaroth. Now this is, uh, this is an arrangement this is an arrangement that, um, that reflects God's divine will. Anything God wants to do in the earth, uh, uh, which whenever he has made it known in his throne there, the heavens 
um, uh, uh, the, the cosmic heavens um, arrange themselves to reflect the divine counsel and purpose. And then, of course, we have the other heaven, uh, which is um, the, the, the man, the rulers, uh, they are a type of um, a heaven. They, because um, the Bible calls he that ruleth among men shall be as the sun. The Bible calls David the light of Israel. The Bible calls God, the, the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Praise God. So we know rulers are like the sun. Uh, uh, they, are like, they are like the moon. They are, they, he said the moon and the stars, they rule. So rulers, physical rulers uh, upon the earth, they are like the sun, they are like the moon, and all of that. And they are like the, uh, the stars. Praise God. Now, tonight, uh, we're looking into the witness of the law. That's, we know we've been looking at all of these things, but we have not checked the witness of the law. So interesting, the witness of the law about all of this. You know, the Bible says that the law and the prophets prophesy unto the coming of the Lord. So we know that um, the law must have a prophecy related to it. Because this is, so, this is so significant in the writings of the prophets. This is so significant in the writings of the um, of the apostles of the Lord and of the Lord himself because when he was going, he gave them, um, he, they, were showing, uh, they were showing him the, the temple and the light of the temple and the grace, the, grace, the gold and all of that of the temple. And uh, they were, it was, they, 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 and he told them, he said, um, you, uh, uh, this, the one, one stone shall not be left upon the other in some days to come. And they said, Lord, <laughs> What, what shall these things be? Uh, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age or, or the end of the world? And one of the things the Lord told them, he said that heaven is are going to lose their light and uh, that the sun are going to, is going to lose its light and the moon shall lose its light and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and all of that. So it's very, it was very, very prominent because if the Lord was going to, um, was sharing about that uh, at, at his going, then we should know that this is a very, very, um, important thing because what a man shares when he's about to leave a particular uh, his, his, his position his reign and the presence of the people he loved is uh, they are always very very important praise God hallelujah so we have um, the witness of the law we're looking at the witness of the Lord in Exodus chapter 30 and uh, in verse 1 um, the Bible talks about there it says now these are the names of the children of Israel Oh, sorry, I moved into Exodus chapter 31. Um, let me go back to Exodus chapter 30, and it's going to be verse 1. Now he says, And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon of shitting wood, that thou shalt make it, uh, shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall it be, shall be the length thereof. The horns thereof, shall be of the same and thou shalt overlay it with gold the top thereof and the sides thereof round about uh, the the horns thereof and thou shalt make unto it crowns of gold praise god crowns of gold you shall make unto it crowns of gold now this is talking about the altar of incense now the next time we're seeing the altar of incense we're seeing it in the new testament again you know as I was looking into all of this, I said, wow, the word of God is so beautiful. The word of God is so fantastic. The word of God is so, um, you know, I, God's wisdom I've really passed finding out. Hallelujah. In Luke in chapter 2, verse 7 to 10, um, let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. Um, let's see. Luke in chapter 2. Luke in chapter 2. Um, verse 7 to 10. Okay, this is the talking Old Testament. Um, okay. Luke in chapter 2 and uh, verses 7 to 10. Okay, I think it should be Luke in chapter 1. Luke in chapter 1 uh, verse 7 to 10. You see, and it came to pass, that's talking about Zechariah, um, it says, and they had no child, himself and Elizabeth, the wife, and they had no child because this Elizabeth was barren and they were both well stricken in age. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office uh, before God in the order of his course, 
according to the custom of the, of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he came into the temple of the Lord. You see, his lot was to burn incense when he came to the temple of the Lord. And um, the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And um, there, there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now you've got to see this displayed again in the book of Revelation as though, wow, scriptures are just so fantastic. You know, um, at the right hand side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled uh, with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall eat turn to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit of the, and the power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and to the, um, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared unto the Lord. What are we bringing out of this place? There is a significance of the altar of incense here. It was a prayer. It was, it was, they were, as the, as the incense was being offered by Zechariah, notice what they said, that people were praying. So associated with the altar of incense is prayer. Did you get that? You need to take note of that. Associated with the golden altar of incense is what? Prayer. All right. And what did the angel tell um, um, uh, Zechariah? The angel told Zechariah, he said, Zechariah, thy prayer has been heard. That's the second witness that the altar of incense is connected to prayers. Hallelujah. Now, um, we may need to go um, to um, Revelation in chapter 8 and in verses 1 to 12 and read. Now, but before we go that, I'd like to tell you about this. So the, all, the angel at, came at, at, at the right hand side of the altar of incense and Zechariah was ministering there and he said, your prayers have been answered. And at that time, it was also the time when the people were standing out praying. Probably this, this, this kind of a situation was done during the time of the great day of atonement. You know, the, the priest had to minister uh, when the people were praying, we'll be praying. You know, uh, you see that in the book of Revelation when he said, and there was, uh, and there was, the heaven was silent and uh, there was silence everywhere for about half an hour and all of that, you know. So, but that's not, uh, what we're dealing with this, uh, evening. Praise God. That's not what we're dealing with this evening. Amen. Now, so let's see this. Let's see Revelation chapter 8 and, uh, in verse, uh, Revelation 8 and in verse 1. Revelation 8 and in verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about this piece of half an hour. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. Did you see an angel stood at the altar in, in Luke in chapter 1? In the book of Revelation in chapter 8, an angel is standing by the altar. Okay? Another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with what? The prayers of the saints. So you see the book of Revelation take associating the golden altar of incense, which was the sixth imp most important um, um, paraphernalia of worship in, uh, in the tabernacle of Moses. Now, so you see that what were they doing here? It was associated with prayers again. You know, so looking at all of this, you just see that God, so God, did he, God has really changed, did he really change his will? All of the things he showed Moses are significant in what we're doing. And I, like, like I always counsel people, say, please make sure that you don't neglect the Old Testament with the spirit of the new and make sure you do not neglect the, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Don't just jump into Romans. You will get some things, you'll get strong things, but you get all that God has a portion for you to get. So let's just go on. And then he says, he said, and the smoke of incense, um, he said, and another angel came to and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints, of all saints, upon the golden altar, which was before the truth. So what Moses showed them in, uh, uh, what God, Moses made for them, for all Asian Israel, 
um, under the law was actually something that existed before the Lord in a form. You know, the original was before the Lord. So this was the place where the prayer of the saints, well, because it was also a type of a sign that, that um, um, John gave to them, you know. So the sign that John gave to them did not come from the Babylonians. It didn't come from the Grecians. It didn't come from the Romans. It came from the Jews. To them were committed. What, what advantaged them than the Jew? Chiefly, first, because to them were committed the oracles of God. So they used these oracles of God to download the divine counsel to us in the New Testament. So um, I say, and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the, with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. And the angel took the censer and filled with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. Oh, okay. Now, let, let's, let's look at this. He said, let, let's back down a little, back up a little. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the incense and filled it with fire of the altar, and it was cast into the earth, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Praise God. Now, now listen to this. So because they prayed, certain things began to happen in the earth. Now, this was not just in the physical earth. This was talking about man, the soul of man. Certain things began to happen that will bring us into the place of perfection in Christ. Hallelujah. You see, because we have been saying that our perfection takes a process. But a lot of times we don't see this process the way they, are, they, they really appear. Let me tell you what I mean by the way they really appear. Um, in Zechariah in chapter 4, I think, Zechariah chapter 4, the, uh, the high priest of God, Joshua the high priest, which appeared before God, before the throne, before the council meeting. And then, we were, because that's a spirit place, so he didn't go there physically, he appeared there in spirit. Or even if he went there physically, he was seen in a spiritual dimension, the way he was in the spirit. And how was he seen? If he were there, there was no way, okay, he was seen with dirty garments. He was with dirty garments. But do you think Joshua the high priest would like to appear with a dirty garment in real life. No. If you saw Joshua at that time, you would see his garment sparkling white. But when it was before he turned around, we saw his appearance in the spirit. He was wearing a dirty garment. That God had to say, your garment is so dirty, it has to be changed. So that's what I mean by, so, so, so there are things that were spoken here that were not just, um, that didn't just have to do with the physical, but that have to do with the spiritual. Hallelujah. So this earth is not just talking about the physical earth. That's if he was talking about the physical earth at all. So we're not talking about the physical earth. He was talking about the spiritual earth, the most stable place, which is the earth. You know, there are three dwellers in the book of Revelation. There are dwellers in heaven, dwellers on the earth, and dwellers by the sea. Now, the dwellers in heaven are the most spiritual the spiritual people, the people going forth to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, or who have actually attained. And then there are dwellers on the earth, the more stable ground, which are soulish. Hallelujah. Then there's a, there are dwellers on the sea. The dwellers on the sea are the unredeemed, the, the unredeemed, the, the wicked, the outright wicked, and all of them like that, you know, that are, that are gross, gross. Praise God. Now, so we're talking about the believer's soul here. The, 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 the uh, sudden things happen as a result of the prayers of all saints. What are the prayers of all saints? The prayers of all saints was not give me a car, give me a house, give me, um, well, it can even be included because one of the reasons why we, we're crying God, God give me a house, God give me a car is because the, the earth is wicked and I denied people their inheritance. And you know, God, is, uh, God in Christ has come to save us from that, that, that wickedness that has deprived us of the things that God has ordained for us to have. Hallelujah. So when you are crying, oh God, give me a car. Or somebody is crying, oh God, my son is sick. How do I get money for treatment? You know how God sees it? He sees that the cry of the creation. Asking, Lord, when will our redemption come? They are waiting for who? They are redeemers. Who are their redeemers? The man, the sons of God. They are waiting. The sons are here, but they are waiting for them to begin to manifest. Praise God. So the prayers of all saints. But these are the prayers of saints. What are the genuine intents and the prayers of the saints? 
Come, Lord Jesus. That's a prayer out of the saints. Now, because we desire the Lord to come, because we, we want to grow to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, because really if you are a believer and you stole something yesterday, your soul was going to be grieved. You're going to say, God, help me. And you committed fornication, committed adultery, whatever you did. You cheated somebody, lied, gave false witness. You're going to, oh, your heart is going to cry. So it was not only the creation that cried, even us also groan. Oh, groan, groan, we want to groan. Why, one of the reasons why we groan in Romans in chapter, chapter 8 is so that we're waiting for the redemption of our bodies. One of the reasons why people lie is because they are afraid of the fact that their salaries may be withdrawn if they knew they were the one that did that thing. They are afraid that they're going to come into a jail house if they knew that they, they were, they, if they caught them doing that thing. They are, they are afraid that they're going to be beaten when you catch a little child. Why is he lying? Because he knows that you're going to beat him when, if he was the one that did it. So because of that, be, be, and, and you know, why do you feel the pain? It's because your, your body is not yet, um, how do you say now? Your body is not yet, um, uh, redeemed. So it's not like Paul's in the book of Romans in chapter 8. He says the creation groan. Um, um, not just, not only they, but we also groan. Hallelujah. To, to, for the redemption of our bodies. Hallelujah. So the prayers of all saints here means the prayers, um, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. If you looked at the prayers of Paul, that gives you uh, a, a little bit of an inkling into the prayers of the saints, of all the saints, all in all generations. Because uh, it says, Lord, give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened that we may know more than ever before the hope of your calling is upon our lives. The riches of the glory of your inheritance in us as saints. The existing greatness of your part of us as believers. Say for this cause in, in uh, Colossians, say for this cause I bow down my knees I bow down my knees to God, um, uh, that he will grant unto you to be strengthened with mine by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ will dwell in your heart by faith, that ye be rooted and granted in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the length and breadth and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that passes all knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. In first Thessalonians, Lord, I said, O Lord, vow straight for us and count us worthy of this high calling which you have called us in Christ Jesus and fill out the good pleasure of your goodness in and trust and the work of faith with power that in the name of Jesus Christ may be glorified in us and ours in him. Praise God. Now, so these are the prayers of the saints. So as a result of the prayers of the saints, silent things began to happen in the earth, which is the soul of man. Now, uh, well, it may affect the, the physical earth, but, uh, but it's going to be an indirect uh, uh, effect that it's going to have in the physical earth. Now, so let's, let's look at that. Um, now, as a result of that, certain things happened. Now, and the, now it says, and the angel took the incense and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Now, there were voices. The voice of the Lord began to alter because of the prayers of the saints which ascended with the incense. The voice of the Lord went forth and there were thunderings. The, 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 the voice of God sounds like thunder. Do you know that in the Old Testament, the voice of God sounds like thunder? So it's still the same thing. And like lightning. You see, as the light, as the Son of Man, as the lightning shines from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So these are revelation of the coming of the Lord that are coming forth as a result of the prayers of the saints. You do get that? And an earthquake. Now we're going to meet this earthquake again in Revelation chapter 6 and in verse 12, as it's going to tell us about all of these things. Now, and the seven angels, which are the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Now, as a result, as a result of the prayers of the saints, which took place at the altar of incense, the angels or the ministry of the angels with seven trumpets was activated. The, the ministry of the seventh angel, can you, can you listen to that again? As a result of the prayer, as a result of the prayer to the saints, which was upon, which was demonstrated as being upon the golden altar of incense, with incense added unto it, and the fire, as a result of that, that the ministry of the seven angels with the seven trumpets was activated. Did you see that? Okay, so let's see what happened as a result of their ministry. And the seven angels, which has the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. And uh, the first angel sounded, and they followed hail and fire, mingled with, with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third 
and the, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the, and the third part of the sun was smitten. Now, this is where I'm going. Now, the first, the first angel sounded, the second angel sounded, the third angel sounded, and the fourth angel sounded. Now, the, 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 from the first to the third, I'm not concerned about that because we're going to be looking at the voice of the trumpets later. We don't understand what they all mean. But I'm sharing about this um, related to the witness of the law because the law was the first person, was the first uh, institution to provide us with the altar of incense. And we looked at what the altar of incense was there, and we looked at what the altar of incense is here. Actually, anytime, anytime the altar of incense is brought into play, you see cleansing. You see prayers being answered. Hallelujah. You see prayers being made. You remember it was, it was at the altar of incense that Isaiah came in Roma, in Isaiah chapter 6, where he said, uh, and the time, uh, in the year which the king Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord high and lifted up, and his strength filled the temple. And I said, woe is me, because I'm a man of unclean lips, because I dwell among people of unclean lips. And, uh, a tongue, a tongue of coal fire of, of, was taken from the altar and placed upon his tongue and made him clean. That was an answer to prayer, an answer to prayer. Praise God. Did you get that? Now, so many times you see the altar of incense, it's always talking about prayers. It's always talking about answers to prayer. It's always talking about divine activity as a result of the answers to the prayers of mankind. Fantastic. God's word is so very pure, beautiful, makes my heart to rejoice. You know, uh, in, Romans, uh, in Revelation chapter 10, the Bible talks about the rainbow angel that took whose right foot was on the earth and whose left foot was on the sea, who held one of his hands to, to heaven and on his other hand was a little book. And he said, um, come and take the little book and eat it up. And John said, I took the little book from his hand and I ate it. And when I ate it, it was sweet in my mouth, but very bitter in my belly. What does that mean? Sweet in my mouth, bitter in my belly. You know, and, um, um, you know, sweet in my mouth, bitter in my belly, you know. So, so, so that, that means that when you say these things and you hear them, revelation makes you to rejoice. But you see, revelation produces action. It must produce corresponding transformation. So it talks about the fact that the period of the transforming experience, which revelation provokes, which it provokes, it's not a sweet uh, experience. Now, let's, let's go back to our, our teaching. And then the, the fourth angel sound, uh, sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them were darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the, and the night uh, likewise. And, uh, and I beheld and, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe to me, uh, to the inhabitants of the earth, by the reason of the other voice of the trumpet uh, of the angels which are yet to sound. Now, so... We can see that the, the, what, what Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 24 came to pass here as a result of the prayers of the saints at the altar of incense, which activated the ministry of the angels with the seven trumpet. Who are the angels with the seven trumpet? Talk about ministers with the, with the seven messages that will perfect the body. That's just it. That's the mystery of, to that. The, 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 the seven angels were the seven ministers that will bring the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the message that will perfect the body. When I say seven ministers, do I mean that one, two, Dilly Matthews, maybe another friend of mine, Mrs. Matthews, and then we got seven, no, 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 that's what we're talking about. We're talking about dispensation of the revelation of truth. There can be 1,000 ministers that will be ministering the same thing about the perfection of the saints part time. That's one minister. He's still one, one sound of the trumpet. Then when this other seven, I mean, second sound of the trumpet happens, there may be 10,000 ministers that are saying those, the message of that seven, second trumpet. On the third trumpet, there may be 100,000 ministers saying the same thing. So I'm not talking about that. The fact that they're going to be coming out of the world, seven angels or out of the church, seven individuals that will meet the seven ministers. That's what I'm talking about. Praise God. That's not it at all. Hallelujah. So they, they, they activated the sound of the, uh, uh, of the seven angels. And when the seven angels happened, I mean, began to sound, certain things began to happen. And in the, as the fourth angel sounded, what did we see happening? We saw the, um, uh, we saw 
uh, the sun smitting, just like Jesus Christ had said. Let, let, let's see. Let's let's. Can we back up a little bit? Um, can we back up a little bit to where the because um, I want to bring you something. Uh, the angels. Uh, 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 okay. Okay, and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Okay, let's look at this in Revelation chapter 6. Let's look at this in Revelation chapter 6. In Revelation chapter 6, and in verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, and I beheld, he had, when he had opened the sixth seal, lo, there was a great earthquake. Did you see earthquake before the sun and the moon lost its, its light partially? In Revelation chapter 8, verse um, 1 to 12. Now, this is the same thing. You see the earthquake again here um, when the sixth seal was opened. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. They didn't give their lights anymore. Hallelujah. I know I've, I've, I've done beyond the time. Uh, my director is trying to I'm done. But I, I want to just finish this in one episode so that we don't have... Two episodes for the witness of the law. Now you see the thundering happened before. Okay, let's see, let me read again. And I be when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. Okay, you see the earthquake in, in Revelation eight before the sun lost its light. You see, see the earthquake also in Revelation chapter six verse twelve before the sun and the moon lost their light. Okay, let's go to um, 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 Matthew. Matthew in chapter 24, where Jesus Christ gave this witness. I'm tying it up right now. I'm tying it up right now. Matthew 24, where the Lord Jesus gave this witness. Uh, Matthew 24, wow, this, my Bible doesn't have, uh, oh, whoa, 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 doesn't have verses. So I have to just look for it. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, I don't know this verse. I think it's verse 29. 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. Okay, now, let's see. Jesus said immediately after the tribulation. Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 to 12 says there was thundering and then the sun lost its light, the moon lost its light. Revelation chapter 6 verse 12 said there was thundering, the sun lost its light and the moon lost its light. Jesus Christ said after the tribulation of those days, what does that mean? It means the tribulation and the thundering were the same thing. Did you get that? The tribulations and the thunderings are the same thing. And as a result of the tribulations that would happen in those days, he didn't call it the great tribulation, no. Uh, the great tribulation happened in the time of the Jews. Right? It's connected to the, uh, the, the, the destruction of Jerusalem. That was when the, the, tri the tribulation of, it, that's, that's when Jesus Christ mentioned the great tribulation. You can find that in Matthew 24. But this one, in, in the Matthew uh, 24, 29, it says, after the tribulation of those days, then the sun. So, now, what, now, this tribulation is the day of the Lord. That's what the prophets call the day of the Lord. Now, the tribulation will make two things happen. Number one, it will bring judgment upon our souls and it will bring judgment upon the powers of this world. Now, in Revelation chapter 6 and verse 12, let's see what happened after the earthquake happened and the tribulation. It says, immediately after the, oh, I mean, Matthew now. Okay, let's read Matthew. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall, be, shall not give our light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, I won't go beyond that, because after they say, and, and there shall appear the sign of the Son of Man. But that's another topic for another day. Praise God. Now, after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall, is going to lose its light and all of that. And we said, what are the sun, the light? They are the powers, the, the spiritual forces that are governing the lives of men. In this age, they're going to give way. 
they are going to lose their shining ability. They're going to lose their shining ability. They're going to, they're going to be dark. They're going to become dark. They're going to lose their leadership abilities. They're going to lose their thrones. They are going to lose their ruling ability because the son is a ruler. Hallelujah. So the spiritual forces over, for example, Nigeria, are going to lose their ruling ability, their ruling power, their ruling strength, their ruling grace. They are going to lose their thrones and positions. But you know what will also happen? As, uh, let's look at uh, Revelation 6, verse 12 first. Revelation 6, 12. Revelation 6, 12. Um, and, and, beheld, and I beheld, and when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as the fig tree casted out of timely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. What does that look like the words of Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ said the son, and after the, tri after the tribulation of those days, Paul, uh, 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 um, John is saying here, after the, and there was a great earthquake. That's in, in Revelation 6, 12. In Revelation chapter 8 also, he also said, talked about the earthquake, talked about the light, voices, lightning, thundering, you know, voices, thundering, lightning, and then an earthquake. And after the earthquake, what happened? The sun lost its light, the moon lost its light. Now he say, after the thundering, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the, what do you call it now? After the earthquake, the, the sun is going to lose its light. After the earthquake. So the earthquake, the two earthquakes there, Revelation chapter 6 verse 12, Revelation chapter 8 verse 1 to 12, uh, they are the same thing as the tribulation of those days. Now, and what, did, what happened after that? And, say, and the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree, okay? And the heaven departed as a scroll, that the heaven, the spiritual heavens that govern our earth, our world, will be rolled away. God is bringing those tribulations because he wants to shake the heavens. See, they are shaking the earth before, at the former time. But right now, he's going to shake the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Now, why am I saying this? Am I talking like a Jehovah's Witness person that is talking about um, uh, be prepared to... And all? No, I'm saying it because you and I are the one to, that God wants to use to shake the heavens. Yes, you and I. But you see, God is also going to shake the heavens of our soul because our soul is a type of heaven. Our spirit is a third heaven. Our soul is a heaven. The spiritual heaven and the cosmic heaven, that's our, our soul. So the power that governs us must be dethroned. Hallelujah. You can imagine if the forces that govern a man's life is the forces of um, uh, my saliness. He cannot give. He doesn't even know how to give. The day the world Word of God comes and pierces through. That's the process of the word of God coming. That is what you see in Revelation chapter 8 when it, when it started talking about the voice, the, the, first, the first angel sounded and there was hail, fire, and blood mixed together and all of that. The first angel sounded, the second angel sounded. That's the process. But the process from the miserliness to a giving heart eventually fulfills the work and then the heavens of that man is renewed. I don't know whether you understand that. I, I, I believe you understand that. It's so clear. He says, And the heaven divided as a score and it is ruled uh, together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The mountains are the basis of philosophy. They are the principalities. The mountains are the principalities. The islands are the standalones, you know, um, um, the uniqueness, uh, you know, of the world that that makes the man who he is, the philosophical expression that makes the man who he is. He's standing in the midst, whether he's standing in the midst of God or whether he's stand, he maintains his personhood. Uh, that the, the islands flew, fled, fled away. Uh, he said, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth, and even as a fig tree casted her uh, untimely flicks, when, uh, figs, when she is shaking of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a school. Okay, now he said, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the den and in the rocks of the mountains. Hallelujah! What is that? The rocks of the mountains. Oh, when they saw the Lord about to come, you know, so the things in our souls began to hide for a base 
uh, the reason for operation. I should do this because of this. That's the mountain. We're going to be sharing about the mountains one of these days. And then if we put that into the physical realm also, um, it's not as if uh, physical men are running around to the mountains fall on us. Is this so that we die? They want to commit suicide? No. They were talking about mountains signify the places of teaching, the places of the basis of actions, the actions of the nations, the actions of the nations, the reason why they are doing what they are doing. For example, one of the things that are going to fall, one of the things that they are going to cry, oh, fall on us, when the Lord begins, to, when they begin to see the Lord coming is in the area of economics. I'll stop at this and then later we'll continue from there. Let me just give this example. The basis for the economics of the nations is what? Is, um, I think, Adam Smith's philosophical expression. It had been like that from before Adam Smith. But Adam Smith, in the days of teaching and uh, enlightenment and all of that in the modern civilization, encapsulated it as economics is the study of, um, that's something we do with scarce resources. Man and how he relates with his environment and his scarce resources. God didn't make any resource scarce. Now, so as the Lord begins to come, God begins to deal with Babylon, crush, crush Babylon, put weights on Babylon, put rain and thunders and fires upon Babylon so that they can break Babylon in our souls. But men are going to want to go to go back to those places again and say, oh, follow us, follow us, we want to hide under you. They're going to bring their, uh, their philosophical expressions higher. They're going to want to lift it up against God. You know, we don't want him to reign over us like in Psalm 2. So the Lord will laugh at them. Hallelujah. So, and also in our souls, as the enemy sees the Lord coming. The enemy sees the Lord. The Lord is gaining ascendancy. The Lord is coming, it's gaining ascendancy in these people's souls. He's going to raise a lot of um, uh, issues. He's going to raise a lot of reasons why you should not be like Christ. Those are the mountains. You know, because you just went to the mountain and taught them. The mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on top of the mountains. What is there in the mountain? What, what is there about the mountain of the house of the Lord that is established above the mountain? What, what is there? Let's see what is there. That's in uh, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, and Amos. And uh, what, what is there is teaching. He said, come, let us go. He said, the nation shall see. And shall come talk to one another and say, come, let us go to the mountain of the, of the house of the God of Jacob, that we may learn of his ways, that he may teach us of his ways. We, we walk in his paths. So mountains are the place of teaching. Just like water also signify knowledge. But mountains are the places of teaching. They are the places of the bulwarks of philosophical expression. The Lord is coming to the earth and he's coming through the church. He's coming through you and I. He's coming through us. Now you have to understand that. Now if he's coming through us, he's going to deal with our souls. And we, after dealing with our souls, he's going to use it dealing with our souls to deal with the earth. And then the kingdom is coming. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this teaching. We give you praise. We pray that it shall be uh, grant your people knowledge and great understanding and so that they can apply themselves to the will of God and the purpose of the Almighty. In Jesus' name, amen.